Okay, uh, those who are here, I believe you are um, sec one or sec two. And, and this lesson, right, we, 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 we changed a little bit already. We changed a little bit in terms of the, the, pre, the class prerequisite and all this. All right. So uh, for the sec one, you're supposed to attempt lesson three from your computer either assessment. And sec two, you're also supposed to attend lesson three from your computer aided assessment. Okay, so we are going through those questions that you have attempted. Then obviously, right, obviously if you are sec one, right, uh, you will not have access to our sec two uh, portion of the <laughs> lesson. If you are sec two, you will not have the sec one portion of the lesson because sec one, sec two, they are learning different things, right? Not. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, I have actually come up with the PowerPoint slide, all right? The one that you are seeing right now, okay? So uh, in any case, if you want, right, uh, after the lesson or maybe give us a one or two days to upload this particular PowerPoint up, all right? Then you will be able to see what the other people are learning, all right? So this, this worksheet will be uploaded into our website also. Then you can print out, okay? Um... So let me just uh, give you an uh, uh, idea what we are going to do today. Okay. So for the lower sec, right, uh, I'll be doing something to do with uh, the lowest common multiple. Okay. Because sec one, come on, you should know what is HCF and LCM. You should know things like a uh, prime factorization and all this. Cool. So question one, we'll be doing a bit of LCM uh, followed by question two and question three. Can? All right, and for the sec two, right, lesson three, we are doing something called revision here. We'll be talking about things like the direct and inverse proportion. So sec one, you don't know about this is perfectly okay. You just listen first, all right, because you'll be covering this in your sec two, okay? Sec two, listen to the sec one because it's take it as a revision, all right? Because HCF, LCM should come out for your final year exam. Doesn't mean that you don't do it this year in sec two, it will not be coming out. It's not true, all right? In sec two final exam, right, everything that you learn in sec one and sec two will be coming out. All right, so you take it as a revision also. And question two, we'll be doing about something called this, um, this one like in primary school also. All right, how many men to build a building line and all this, da, 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 da. and also the map and scale. All these are your sec two topic. All right, actually this lesson is quite short. All right, reason is because right, I do not have uh, any like miscellaneous students question. So my advice to you, right, sec one, sec two, if you have questions that you don't understand, all right, can you please write it in to me? All right, take a picture, a clear picture, write it in to me. Either you can WhatsApp me or you can send it to my email. So actually we can make the class longer a little bit whereby you're able to consult me with your own question that you don't understand. Can you see it not? So this miscellaneous student question portion will be the question that you have to send it to me, send in to me. And give me some time to put it into the PowerPoint slide like this. All right, so give me about two days. So if you can send in by like Monday or you know from, to, from today onwards to the next Monday, that would be great. All right, you have my number and all this, nothing to fear. All right. So what is happening is that uh, I will teach you how to print also. So don't worry about it. So uh, at this moment, right, if you don't have the copy, the printed copy in front of you, just listen to the lesson first. Don't worry so much. Don't worry so much about it. Okay. All right. So for sec two, just take it as a revision because we are doing sec one work. And sec one, um, yeah, this is what you are supposed to know for this part. Okay. Okay, so down here, the first thing, written as the product of its prime factor. What's the meaning of prime? Okay, prime, right? You have to think of something called the prime numbers. Prime numbers. Okay, what are examples of prime numbers? The first five prime numbers you need to know. The first five prime numbers you need to know. They are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. All right, the first five prime numbers, please, you have to know them. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. Teacher, what is the meaning of prime number? Prime numbers are numbers that only has two factors. All right, this is the definition of prime numbers. All right, only got only you. Uh, excuse me, only got two factors. And inside the two factors, right, one of them is a one, and the other one is itself. What do I mean? For example, the number two. What are the factors of two? Here, you have to write out right, 1 times 2. That is the only possibility. And one of them is a 1, and the other one is itself, which is a 2. How about 5? 5 is what? 1 times 5. Are there any other possibility? Don't have. 
All right, one times five. One is a one, and the other one is itself. Can you see not? That's the reason why two, five, they are considered prime numbers. All right, you must know what is the meaning of prime numbers. Uh, because I got some sec three, sec four, they still don't know what is prime numbers. That's scary. Right, sec one, sec two, you know all this, right? All this knowledge, please keep it in there. All right, when you go up to sec three, bring it along. Don't say that ah, after the year, end of the year, delete off everything. All right, everything you learn in sec one, delete away. Is it no, 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 bring it up with you. Can you do that for me? All right, do it for yourself. Like the so down here, the meaning of prime numbers means like this they only have two factors, one of it is a one, and the other one is itself. This one you need to know. And the first five examples of prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. All right? So what's the meaning of, what is the opposite of prime numbers? Huh? Anyone know? Anyone want to key into the group chat? All right, what is the opposite of prime numbers? Unprime numbers, is it true? No, huh? no such thing as what? Unprime. Composite smart, Doreen. All right, composite numbers are the what? Opposite of prime numbers, very good. All right, so there's something called composite. So again, right, all these terms you must know. Huh? And the first composite number is a what? The first composite number is not a 1, it's a 4. All right? Things that is not up in the prime number is the composite number. So prime number is 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. Huh? So composite is 4. In between 3 and 5 is 4. In between 5 and 7 is 6. All right? In between 7 and 11 is 8, 9, 10. Can you see not? All these are examples of composite numbers. What is the meaning of composite numbers? It's like the opposite of prime number. It must have more than two factors. All right, composite numbers must have more than two factors. So it's like four. Uh, four is what? One times four, two times two. What are the factors of four? One, two, four. Ne? Got three, right? Correct, uh? that's why it's a composite number. Uh? Okay? All right, so down here, express 90 as a product of its prime factor. What you do? All right, I believe you know this method. 90 is here. So you always use the smallest prime number to break down the number 90. All right. So 90 is an even number. And the only prime number that's even is a 2. So you use the 2 to break it down. 90 divided by 2 is a 45. All right. Then 45. 45 can divide by 2? Cannot. 45 is an odd number. So can I divide by 3 next? Can. How do you check whether can divide by 3 or not? Very fast method. Look at the 4 and 5. You add up the digit 4 and 5. 4 plus 5 is a 9. 9 is a multiple of 3. Definitely can divide by 3. This is something which I think is quite useful. Lah. All right? It's not a very big thing, but I mean, you can press calculator and all this. But sometimes to do it fast, right? you can actually use this as part of your mental sum. So you take the digit 4 and the digit 5. 4 plus 5 is a 9. 9 is a multiple of 3. Means what? Can divide by 3. So 45 divided by 3 is a 15. 15 can divide by 3 or not? Again, 1 and 5. The digit 1 plus the digit 5. 1 plus 5 is a 6, right? 6 divided by 3? Yes, can. Can. Can divide. All right? Fifth, uh, 6 is a multiple of 3, one. So you can divide by 3. 15 divided by 3 will give you a what? 15 divided by 3 will give you a 5. All right? Hey, what thing to divide by 5? You must get to a 1, ah. So 5 divided by 5, lah. It's a 1. All right? So yes, your answer is 5 times 3 times 3 times 2. Correct. All right, so 90 is given as, usually we write it in an ascending order. Azak, you're right. All right, 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. But once again, right, we don't like to write the 3 so many times. We want to save the planet a little bit. So how? We try to simplify it a bit. 2 times 3 squared times 5. This is your answer. All right, this format, uh, hey, children, this format is called what? This format is called product of its prime factor. What is the meaning of product? Product means must have the times, right? Prime means what? Must have prime numbers, right? Two, three, five are prime numbers. And these are factors, correct? Yes, Shamin, smart. You say this is called index notation. Good. This is another way of saying, correct? So sometimes they can say, hey, I want the answer expressed as a product of its prime factor. I want the answer expressed as index notation. It all means this answer here. Understand or not? All right. So sometimes they can use the word index notation. Very good. So all these are very simple things, uh, like the terms. You must know what the question is asking for. If not, then how to answer? Right or not? All right. So let's move on to the next part. So 90 is equal to 2 times 3 squared times 5. Hey, better to make sure. I'm very scared I make mistake. I press calculator. See correct or not? 2 times 3 squared times 5. 90, ah, uh, correct, correct, correct. 
So again, checking along the way is important. Can? Okay, part B. You're supposed to write down the lowest common multiple. LCM means the lowest common multiple of 375. And 90. Eh, 90 I just found out, right? Just now, 90 is what? 90 is equal to, I write, uh, 2 times 3 squared times 5. Okay, this is from my calculator. Just now I found out already, 90. Eh, you're supposed to find the LCM, right? So 375 I can put down here. 375 is equal to what? 3 times 5 cubed. Remember, uh, you can use this one method. All right, but if you use this method, right, if you want to compare the what the prime factors, please remember to make sure they are they are in line. You must compare the base and the base. You must have a fair comparison. Look here, three times five cube. The three where do you put? You put under the three square times what? The five cube, right? You put under the five five cube here. Can you see not? All right, so this one is what I call what. Highest take the lowest, lowest take the highest. All right, so this method down here, right? I purposely call it what? All right, I call it highest take the lowest. Highest take the lowest. Lowest take the highest. Okay, so those of you who have attended the lesson, right? You should have heard of this phrase before. All right, if they are the same, take one. Remember this? So down here, right, I make sure that they are all in line. All the base 2, they are in line. All the base 3, they are in line. All the base 5, they are in line. Hey, sure, there's one empty slot there. In front of the 3, right, for 375, there's one empty slot down here. So how? What do you do? If there's an empty slot, right, just put a 1 down there. 1 times. Please don't put a 0. Uh. If you put a 0, I put everything times 0, everything gone. So don't put a 0, put a 1 down there. Why do you put a 1? So that your eyes can make a fair comparison. Right? Move it down directly. Yes. Alright? So that your eyes can make a fair comparison. Can you see now? So now you compare 2 with the 1. You compare 3 squared with the 3. You compare 5 with the 5 cubed. Can you see now? So you can make a fair comparison like that. Make sure they are in line. It's easier to do. So remember, they are looking for LCM. Huh? Lowest take the highest. Lowest common multiple, you take the highest. LCM, you take the highest. 2 and 1. Who is the highest? 2 la. 3 square and 3. Who is the highest? 3 square la. 5 and 5 cubed. Who is the highest? 5 cubed la. And this is your answer for LCM. Giving your answer as a product of its prime factor. Okay. So you stop here. Alright, you stop here. Don't go and what? Don't go and uh, go and press your calculator. 2 times 9 times 1, 2, 5. All right. Uh, answer is 2250. Alright, if you write 2250, what happened? If you write 2250, your teacher will mark you wrong. How come? Alright, we will mark you wrong. How come? Because the question asks for what? Giving your answer as the product of its prime factor. As an index notation, they never ask you to evaluate. The question never asks you to evaluate. Evaluate means you have to press for the final answer. Did the question say that? No. Question say product of its prime factor. So you must give this portion only. Can you see or not? Don't do extra. All right. Don't do extra. So this is your answer. Okay. So be careful. Give your teacher what they want. Yes. Correct. Correct. Sherman. You're right. They never ask for whole final answer. You're right. All right. So that is your LCM. Easy. Easy. Next question. What is the greatest integer? Greatest integer means you know. Greatest, largest, biggest. All right, when this word comes out, what happened? Greatest, largest, biggest. I know that they're, they're looking for what? HCF. All right, when, they, when you see this word, greatest, biggest, largest, right? You have to look for the HCF. All right, answer is 15. Very good. All right, ah, this case, right? Look, the greatest integer that will divide 375 and 90 exactly. They never say as a product or prime factor. So you can what? You can press for the final answer. You can evaluate. Answer is 15. Very good, Azar. All right. But HCF, how do you find HCF? Remember, highest take the lowest. All right. Highest, com highest common factor, you must take the lowest. Two and one, who is the lowest? One. Three squared and three, who is the lowest? Three. Five and five cubed, who is the lowest? Five. And your answer is 3 times 5, 15. This is the correct answer now. Can you see not? Give your teacher what they want. If not, they will minus your marks. Can you see? Can. Uh, is it because highest take lower, so you must take 1 times... Yes, correct. Jack Tro, you're correct. Yeah, correct. 
So this is the what? This is the method whereby you list out the what? You list out the prime factors and you do a comparison. Highest common factor, you take the lowest. Lowest common multiple, you take the highest. If the numbers are the same, you just take one set. Hey, sure. is there another method? Yes. Another method is called the what? Prime factorization. Remember this? Remember this? And you are supposed to write the two numbers, 90 and 375 like this, side by side. Can you see not? Ah, the ladder method. Whoa, Charmaine. So your school teacher teach you the ladder method, but I don't know, I don't know why is it called a ladder, but I know it's like that, you see. So in the textbook, it's called prime factorization, but your school teacher call it ladder. Yes, that's okay. Don't worry about it too much. Can you see? So let's use the ladder method. Okay. So how? For the ladder method or the prime factorization, you are supposed to use prime numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, 11 to break down the both numbers. So the very first number, right? The very first number must be divisible by both 90 and 375. All right. You must definitely find your HCF first. If you want to follow the ladder method, right? You must always find your HCF first, highest common factor. So in this case, what is a number that can be both divisible by 90 and 375? Cannot divide by 2. 90 can, but 375 cannot divide by 2. So we skip 2 to go to 3. All right. 90 can divide by 3. Yes. 9 is a multiple of 3. Can divide by 3. 375 le? 3 plus 7 is a 10. 10 plus 5 is a 15. 15 is a multiple of 3. Definitely can divide by 3. That's the clue. So 90 divided by 3 will give you a what? 30. 375 divided by 3 will give you a what? 1, 2, 5. Can we divide by 3 some more? Uh, 1 plus 2 is a 3. 3 plus 5 is a 8. Cannot already. 1, 2, 5 cannot divide by 3 because 8 is not a multiple of 3. So how? Uh, after 3 is a 5. Let's divide by 5. 30 divided by 5 is a 6. 1, 2, 5 divided by 5 is a 25. So at this moment, can we divide some more? Can we divide by 7? We need to divide by the common number, the common prime number. Is there anything else that we can divide uh, with 6 and 25? Nothing else really, right? So this portion is called the what? This portion is called the HCF. Oh? And HCF is what? 3 times 5. Is it the same answer? Yes, it's the same answer. Then in order to find the LCM, after you find the HCF, you go on to find the LCM. How? You must get a 1-1 one, one ultimately. Okay? So 6 and 25, again, we fall back on the number 2. Be systematic in your way of doing. Divide by 2. All right? 6 can divide by 2 is a 3. 25 cannot divide by 2. Never mind. Leave it. Okay? Again, 3. All right? Can we divide by 3? Can. Let's divide by 3. So down here, get you a 1. 25 cannot divide by 3, leave it. 25 can divide by what? Can divide by 5. All right, that will give you a 5. 5 divided by 5 again to give you the 1. So eventually, your objective of 1-1 one, one is met. Where is the uh, LCM? Where is the LCM? The LCM is everything here. Long? All right, which is what? The LCM is everything here, which is equal to uh, 2 times uh, 1, 2. 3 square times 1, 2, 3, 5 cubed. Can you see now? Which is the same as this answer down here. All right, so down here, right, this question, right, I'm showing you two different methods. So, when to use what? Uh, common sense a bit. Where is the common sense? Look, look at what the question gives you. The question gives you this one. And the question asks you to find what is 90 in the beginning, right? 90 is equal to uh, 2 times 3 squared times 5. So this question, right, they already give you so much information about 90 and 375 already. So use what method? Obviously, use this method. Lah. Can you see not? You don't go and purposely like redo everything. Like. Don't purposely go and redo everything to go and uh, suit your ladder method. Don't do that. All right? Because part A, they already tell you 90 is what already. Or you have to find out why it's 90 is what already. And they give you 375. Just compare the what? Compare the highest, take the lowest. Lowest, take the highest. Don't redo everything. Don't waste time. Understand or not? All right. So you must know what method to use also. All right. And if best, know all the methods. So when different situations arise, right? Yes, I'm able to execute this and that. No problem. Can you see or not? All right. You must be able to know more methods. Huh? That's good. All right. Question two. Ready? Uh, this is our question. Confirm is LCM. All right. The bells tong at intervals of 20 minutes. 20 minutes, what? 20 minutes, the next one is another 20 minutes, the next one is another 20 minutes, and so on. So every 20 minutes, it will tong. Every 30 minutes, it will tong. Every 15 minutes, it will tong. So got three different bells. So if they tong together at 2.15, find the time they will tong 
together next. So this type of question, right? Do you see the word largest, greatest, biggest? Never, right? If you never see this word, it's not HCF really. It's definitely LCM. And this type of question is always like that one. The light bulb, la, the red one will blink how many times? Then the green one blink. Then the yellow one blink. Ah, all this type of question is all LCM kind of question. So LCM, what can I do? Find the LCM. Lo. Okay. So you can take what? You can take the, the ladder method. La, huh? Let's use uh, Charmaine's uh, calling of this as the ladder method to get the LCM. So you divide by what? Eh, prime number 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. Can you see not? Every time, right, I will write down the prime numbers on my right. So that it reminds me what's the meaning of prime number. Can divide by two or not? Uh, the first step is must divide by the same number. All three can divide one. Uh, can divide by two. 20 and 30 can, but 15 cannot. Divide by three. Uh, divide by three cannot because uh, 20 cannot. Right? So how? Eh, divide by five. All right, always find the what first. Always find the HCF first. I know the question never asked, but if you want to use the ladder method, please do this. All right, if you want to use the ladder method, you have to find the HCF first. That is the rule. All right, so 15 can divide by 5? Yes. 20 can divide by 5? Yes. 30 can divide by 5? Yes. So you will have 3 here, you get 4 here, and you get 6 down here. All right, so any more prime numbers that can be divisible by 3, 4, and 6? Nothing already. Uh. So this is your what? This is your HCF. Hey, but is the question asking for HCF? No, you're looking for LCM. Go on. Go on to find your LCM. Okay, so how? Some of your school teacher right, do this, or maybe some of you do this. LCM is like that. Look, some of you do this. You say that LCM is 5 times 3 times 4 times 6. How many of you do this? That is the wrong thing to do. Stop it. Stop having all these bad habits. All right, you say that 5, 3, 4, 6. Everything just times. No, nope. it's not like that. All right, how come? Because, right, just to let you know, at this stage, right, 3, 4, and 6, what happened? At this stage, 3, 4, and 6, what happened? All right. 4 and 6 inside. Huh? 4 and 6 inside. There's something common in them. You can divide by 2. Do you know that? So down here, right? 3 cannot divide by 2. Never. I leave it as 3. 4 divided by 2 is a 2. 6 divided by 2 is a 3. Can you see not? All right. 4 and 6 can still simplify. Yes, Sherman, you're right. So be careful. Don't just everything what? Everything just times. Very dangerous. Answer is 3, 15. All right, uh, Jethro, you got it right. Uh, Azar, you got it right also. All right, so be careful. Uh, use the method. Do it slowly, systematically. All right, so divide by 2 again. Because you can for this one to get to a 1. Last step, then you divide by 3. And now here is 1, 1, and 1. Woo! This is your objective. So the LCM will be equal to... LCM is everything. Huh? Everything here is your LCM. Okay, let me change color. Red color. Huh? The whole thing here is your LCM. E. Okay, so the LCM is actually 5 times 2 times 2 times 3. Alright, better write in ascending order. So I put a 5 at the back. Okay, uh, did the question say must, must present in prime factor, a uh, product of prime factor? Uh, did the question say must put in index notation? Never lah, just press calculator. 2 times 2, 4. 4 times 3, chow. 2 times 5, 60. Oh, uh, teacher show off. Alright, so 60 minutes is what? 60 minutes is the LCM. Alright, 60 minutes means what? Eh, 1 hour lah. So the starting time they tong together is 2.15. Right, so down here is 2.15 p.m. After one hour is what? After one hour is 3.15. And this will be your answer. Can? Yes, all of you got it. I mean, some of you got it. Those who answer. Good job. Can, huh? All right, so this is for part B. I mean, for part A. Question B, huh? question B. Uh -huh. This one, there's a fourth bell. Okay, look, huh? The three bells tong at 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and 15 minutes. This one we know, uh, this one, the LCM is what? LCM is 60 minutes, right? One hour. If there's another bell that tong together with the first three bells at 2.15. Okay, so 2.15 is the starting. And what do you say? The next time where they tong together is 4.15. That means what? 2.15 to 4.15 is how many hours? 2.15 to... 4.15 is how many hours apart? Ah, from here to here is uh, 2 hours apart. Uh. 2 hours is equal to what? 120 minutes. Correct or not? Alright. So be careful. Uh. They are looking for what? What must be the minimum interval at which the fourth bell dong together? Alright. So in this case, right, 
the LCM, right? The LCM of four of them, right? The LCM of four of them must be 120. Sherman, you're right. All right. So down here, right? The LCM of the four bells, right? Must be 120 minutes. Okay. So how do you do? All right. Hey, hey sure. can the answer be one minute or not? Because they want minimum what? Cannot. It hey, actually can. Eh? Right. Cannot. So one minute, every one minute it rings. Ah. Every one minute it rings. Every one minute it rings. So every, every minute it rings, right? So on the 59 minute it will ring. On the 60 minute it will ring. On the uh, 119 minutes it will ring. On the 120 minutes it will ring also. Ah. So answer is one minute. Lah. Cannot. No. Cannot. How come? Because they say the lowest common multiple of the four bells must be what? Must be 120. If it rings every one minute, right? Then it will still be LCM 60 minutes, right? Can you see or not? So in this case, right, in this case, right, you cannot say it's one minute. Uh, then will be what? Two minutes, ah. So you keep trying and error, is it? Try and error, is it? 315 will ring what? Correct. So it cannot be one minute. You're right, Doreen. All right. So how? My advice to you, list out. List out the what? Multiples of 60 and 120. Let's list out the multiples of 120 first. All right. Then you can make a comparison. The multiples. No, no, not the multiples. Sorry. The factors of 120. All right. The factors of 120. All right. Because one of the answer must be the factor of 120, right? The number that makes up 120. All right. So that you can easily divisible by 120. Right? So it must definitely be a factor. So I list out first. Huh? So it's like 1 times 120. What else? 2 times 60. Uh, 3 times 40. Uh, 4 times 30. Uh, 5 times, 5 times what? 5 times 24. Uh, 6, 6 times 20. 7 cannot. 8, 8 times uh, 15. Uh, 9 cannot. 9 cannot. 10. 10 times 12. 11 cannot. 12. 12 will be 12 times 10. Can you see not? So these are the factors of what? Factors that mix 120. Alright, these are the factors that mix 120. Okay, so down here, right, you already got what? You already got 20, 30, and 50 already. All right, and who is that? Huh? Shaman, eight minutes. Huh? Smart girl, huh? very fast. Huh? Very good. Huh? So you already got 20, 30, and 15 already. So this one cannot use already. So 20 cannot use already. 15 cannot use already. 30 also cannot use. The rest you got a chance. All right, the rest you got a chance. All right, hey, but remember, huh? remember, huh? you need it to be what? You need it to be. Uh, uh, one of these answers, right? So it can be one, it can be two, it can be three, it can be four, and so on. But this answer, it cannot be a what? It cannot be a factor of 60. Alright? It cannot be a factor of 60 because you don't want it to ring after one hour. You want to ring together after two hours. So it cannot be a factor of 60. So my advice, write out the uh, factors of 60. So factors of 60 is equal to... Okay? So down here, you write out... Uh, 1 times 60, 2 times 30, uh, 3, uh, 3 times 20, uh, 4, uh, 4 times 15, uh, 5, uh, 5 times 12, and 6 times 10. Anything else? Don't have. So what appears in factors of 60, uh, what happens in uh, factors of 60 cannot appear in factor of 120. Cannot be. All right. So 1 cannot. Uh. So down here, you screen out. Uh. It's very fun, right? If you understand what's happening, 1, you cannot. 1 cannot. 2 cannot, 2 cannot, 3 cannot, cannot, uh, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6. All this cannot. All right, because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? If it is the answer, right? It will, ding, it will ring together at the 60 minutes. You don't want that. You want it to ring together at the 120 minutes. Remember that, huh? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 cannot. Uh, then the 30, right? 30 is repeated. 15 is repeated. Uh, and 20 is also repeated. So what's the next answer? All right. Uh, can you have 60? 60 also cannot because 60 is down here. Uh, 12. Uh, 12 also cannot because 12 is down here. Uh, 10 also cannot. 10 is down here. Ah. So you look at your factors of 120 down there. Which is the answer? All these can be the answer. The one in red box. All these can be the answer. 120. 40. All these can be the answer. 24. 8. So I got four answers. Which one to take? Oh. They want the minimum interval. So how? Answer is 8. Can you see not? Right, when you understand the question, right, it's actually very fun in doing one, really. All right, then now if the question asks you, hey, what's the maximum? Uh, maximum is 120. No? All right, every 120, it ring one time. Can you see not? 
So looking at all this, right, you are able to slowly screen out things that you don't want, things that is repeated, and you look for the what the condition which is what minimum. Minimum means the smallest. So you make a comparison. No? Can you see or not? Step by step, very interesting, very fun to play with. Okay? Alright. Hey, sec two. Remember this or not? <laughs> this will be coming out uh, for your final year. M maybe not the exact question, uh, but something similar. Sure, come out one. LCM, HCM. I guarantee you. Alright. Alright, next question. Uh, question two uh, is done. Question three. Let's talk about Henry. Alright, so all this is actually found in the sec one um, lesson three, where we talk about LCM. Okay, so the sec two you're not able to go into here is perfectly okay. All right, just listen as a revision. All right, later I will teach you how to print out some parts of the worksheet. You're able to do it on yourself. I mean, not on yourself. Like, that's weird. You do it by yourself. Okay, so Henry takes nine minutes and Luke take 15 minutes to complete one lap around the path. All right, so there's a running track. Henry only takes nine minutes, which is faster. Huh? So Henry is faster. Luke is slower, 15 minutes. They run in the same direction. And they maintain the same lap time. Means that what? Harry takes what? Nine minutes every round. I don't care. Nine minutes every round. Luca takes what? 15 minutes every round. How many more laps will Harry have completed when Luke, when they next meet at the starting line? This is our question again. When they next meet again. When they next meet again. Can you see not? This is our question when they start together. You know, you know this is our question. It's always LCM1. Once again, you read through. Is that the word greatest, largest, biggest? Don't have. So it's unlikely it's HCF. So it's an LCM question. So how? Just take the 9 and 15 and perform your LCM. Got marks one. So your prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. Uh, you must divide by what? A common factor first, right? Which is a 3. All right, to find your HCF first. If you're using the ladder method. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 15 divided by 3 is a 5. Oh, HCF is a 3. So what? I want to find LCM. Continue. All right. Continue to what? Divide by 3. To give you a 1, this is a 5 still. Continue to divide by 5 to give you a 1, 1. This is your objective. So my LCM is what? My lowest common multiple is 3 times 3 times 5, which is equal to 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 5 is 45 minutes. So what does it mean? Oh, it means that every 45 minutes, every 45 minutes pass, what happened? They will meet one time. Every 45 minutes pass, they will meet one time. Eh, 45 minutes doesn't mean that they run the same number of rounds. Ah. Our dear Harry is faster. So Harry, right, in 45 minutes, right, how many rounds did he run? 45 minutes divided by 9 per round. He ran 5 rounds already. Our dear Luke, leh? Luke, ah, slower, never mind. Alright, 45 minutes, right, 1 round is 15 minutes. He only managed to run 3 rounds. Can you see it now? So question is asking, how many more laps or how many more rounds? Okay, maybe I should use the word laps. Lah. Don't confuse you. All right, how many more laps? So answer will be two laps. Can you see not? So it's five minus two. Yes, Doreen, you're right. Sherman, you're right. Five minus three is equal to two laps. More. And that's what the question wants. Okay, right? So a hey, sec one. Okay, LC LCM. And sec two, LCM, probably the same one. All right, sometimes there's about one or two different questions. Right, but this one is still manageable, right? Okay, good. Yes, Victoria. Well, you still got two, uh, Victoria. <laughs> Very good. All right, so this is the secondary way of doing, just to let you know Victoria, because Victoria is not primary five, no, she's not primary six, she's like primary three, and she's still attending lesson down here. <laughs> but it's okay, la. she want to learn more, let her learn. All right, and she can get answer too. That's good for her. Okay? So this is for your sec one work. Uh. Sec one, we talk about LCM. Let's talk about a bit about the sec two work. All right, sec two work here. All right, sec two, we talk about something called proportion. Let's not talk about question one first. Let's do something, question two first. I think question two is a bit easier. All right, this one you have seen it in Premier 5 before. Very easy. 22 men. All right, let me do a bit of summary. 22 men. Uh, this one is a man. Uh, the stick man is a man. Uh. 22 men takes what? 60 days to do what? To paint one building. All right, one building. Is that okay? Okay, my drawing, nice, right? I know. Assuming that the workers work at the same rate, means that they are working at the same pace, how many more workers must be hired, must be employed, if the building, the same one building, is to be completed 20 days earlier? Eh, eh, what does 20 days earlier means? Be careful. Alright, 
20 days earlier means right, I want you to complete in what? In 40 days. Understand or not? The meaning of 20 days earlier means that I want this painting to be done in 40 days. Do you understand? All right, so be careful of the 20 days earlier. All right, so actually you need 60 days uh, for 22 men to paint the one building. But I want it to be done, right? 20 days earlier means that I want you to complete it in 40 days. So here, from 60, right, how to get to 40? Here, I'm doing a comparison, uh, 60. I purposely find 10 days first. I don't find one day. I find 10 days first. All right, 10 days. I want to do the what? One building. One building like that. Okay? So 60 days, I can finish the one building with the help of 22 men. Here, 10 days only. 10 days. 60, how do you get to the 10? Huh? 60, how do you get to the 10? 60, you need to divide by 6. 60 need to divide by 6 to give you a 10. Down here, eh? what do you do? Question, do you divide by 6 or times 6? Doreen, answer is 33 men. Is it, do you minus the 22 men? <laughs> Azza, 42 men is wrong. All right, Doreen, I think you need to do one more steps. Okay? So down here, at 60 days, you get to 10. You divide by 6. All right, 60 divided by 6 is a 10. 22, do you divide by 6? Be careful. All right, you cannot divide by 6. You need to times 6. Why? This is what I call an inverse proportion. All right, inverse means what? Okay, let's talk about direct first. Direct is easy. One apple, two dollar. Two apple, four dollar. Three apple, six dollar. That's called direct. You increase on the apple, you increase on the amount. But down here, inverse means what? It's the opposite. All right. So maybe you have lesser days. You need what? You need more manpower. Can you see or not? You only got 10 days. How can you divide by six? That would be weird, right? So here you need to do the opposite. 22 times six will give you a 132. Does this make more sense? Ask yourself. Does this make more sense? I got lesser day, but I got more manpower. Correct or not? Yes, it makes sense to complete the one building. Eh? But the question was what? 40 days, huh? Down here, 40 days. Question was 40 days. How many men do I need? So down here, be careful. Down here, be careful. From 10, how do I get to 40? I need to times 4. All right? 10, I need to times 4 to get to 40. What do I do on the other side? I need to do the reverse, which is divide by 4. So 132 divided by 4 will give you a what? 132 divided by 4 will give you a 33 man. Right, 33 man. So this is the answer that Doreen got, 33. It's also the same answer that Victoria got, 33. Now Shermin said 11. Yes, you're the girl. All right, answer is 11. 33 man is needed for one building to be, uh, to be painted in 40 days. But the question says what? How many more? You now got how many? You now got 22 men eh? At present, you got 22 men. But you want everybody to do faster. You want all this. What happened? You need more men, right? How many more? Yes. 33 minus the 22. You need 11 more men. Can you see or not? Doreen, be careful. All right. Your last step must come in. Huh? All right. And that is the way to do it for primary 5, primary 6. Okay. Okay. So this is easy. Huh? Okay. Now we go back to the sec 2 method. Huh? Sec 2. <laughs> Sec 2, huh? down here. What do you have? So at this moment, right, Sec 2, you have to uh, perform certain uh, step by step. Okay, for Sec 1, if you are looking at this, all right, you'll be doing this in Sec 2. So just follow through first. Don't panic. All right, for Sec 2, you should know what I'm doing. Okay, okay. So they say that Y squared is inversely proportional to X. What do I do? I use something called English Translate to Mathematics, E to M. All right, I use this in primary 3, primary 4, so E to F. Very, very useful. English translate to mathematics. Y square, just write Y square. X, just write X down here. All right, when you look at the sentence, right, there are some keywords. When you see the word proportional, all right, when you see the word proportional, all right, you draw this symbol. It's like a fish. It's like a fish, you know, like a fish. All right, down here is like the fish. Right, okay, yeah, my, my fish not nice, lah, okay? So you draw this symbol. When you see the green color, you draw the symbol. Can you see? When you see the word inversely, right? English to math, ah, when you see the word inversely, you draw the one over, like that. Can you see not? All right, so this is something like you're coming out with your own equation. So English to math, y squared is inversely proportional to x. That's English, right? You translate to mathematics form. 
So y squared and x, okay, write it down first. When you see the word proportionate, draw the fish in between the y squared and the x or whatever. They may give you a y and the x square. They may use a y and the x, whatever it is. Just draw the fish in the center. When you see the word inversely, you draw the one over. Like this. Standard step. Nothing goes wrong, trust me. So down here, right, what do you do? All right, the fish, right, you cannot do anything to the fish. So how? You must exchange the fish for what? For equal sign. Huh? But how can I do that? If you do a change, right, you must change the fish, right? You must do, you must, in a way, change it in such a way that something extra will come out. All right? So the fish will bring out something called equal to K. Okay? Standard step, don't worry. And what happened? Your Y square is still here. Your X square is still here. And the over is still here. All right? Trust me, it works one. Trust me. All right, so the fish, you change to a equal to K. Standard step. So this step is standard. Down here, what must you say? Down here, because you are bringing out something, right? A K. K is like what? A alphabet you also bring out. That's algebra already. So how? You must declare to your teacher. Teacher, teacher, where K is a constant. You must tell your teacher that I am bringing out a alphabet K. All right, for sec two, you know this already. All right, nothing wrong. So you just say that where K is a constant, you are saying that I'm bringing out an algebra, an alphabet K, and K is actually a constant number. Okay, so now here, what do you do? So usually, right, the, the question will give you a pair of information. Look here. For a particular value of Y, X is 37. Ah, yeah, they give you X is 37, right? You can say what? Substitute X as 37. And Y, what is Y? Let Y be something. All right, at this moment, right, usually the question will give you X and Y so that you got a pair of information. But if they never give you, never mind. Trust me, it works fine. Let your Y be Y. You give me any number. Any number, I will surely give you the right answer. You can say, okay, anyhow, let Y be 1. All right, oh, 6, ah. Shermaine say 6. Okay, let's say, let Y be 6. Shermaine say 1. All right, I never pack up with her. Ah. I don't know her. Ah. I never see her before. Ah. She say that, let y be 6. So I'm just writing out y is 6. I'm very confident my, math, my method will work. Okay? So substitute x is 37 and let y is 6. So down here, I put in my y. y squared is actually like 6 squared. Alright? The y, I exchange for a 6. The k, I don't know. The x, eh? The x is a... Down here, don't have the square, sorry. The x is a what? x is a 37. Can you see? Alright? Just now, I, I erase away the square is because... Uh, look, I'm here. This is only an x, y. This is only an x. Can you see that? All right, I wrote extra just now. So 6 represents your y. x represents your 37. So here you have what? You have 36 is equal to k over 37. Can you see? And I want to find k. My first objective is always for, to find k. So 36 is actually 36 over 1. I do a what? Cross multiply. Why? Single fraction equal to single fraction, you can cross multiply. Okay? So you have what? K times 1 is a K. 36 times 37, press your calculator. It's a 1332. Thanks, Ashamin. Because you give me a very big number. That's why my K becomes very big. Okay? But just to prove to you that I will get the same answer, don't worry. Okay? So K is 1332, so I have to put this K back into my equation. So now my equation is what? My equation is Y square is equal to K. What is K? 1332. All right, one, three, three, two. Over what? Over x. This is my equation. Okay, now, they, they, now read. Find the value of x when the value of y is half the. Just now my y is 6, right? Shemin say one. Just now my, my y is 6. Now it's half the. Means what? So now when y is half the. Means what? It means that my y is equal to? 6 divided by 2. Ah. Half means divided by 2, right? Now my y is 3. All right, because just now she said it's 6, I use 6. And now the question says if y is half, 6 divided by 3 means, 6 divided by 2 means 3. So you have to substitute ah, your y as a 3. So 3 squared is equal to 1, 3, 3, 2 over x. 3 squared is actually 9, 9 over 1 is equal to 1, 3, 3, 2 over x. What do you do? Single fraction equals single fraction, you do a cross multiplication. Alright, so 9 times x, 1 times 1, 3, 3, 2. So down here you continue, 
9 times x is 9x. 1 times 1332 is 1332. x will be equal to 1332 divided by 9. And if you press your calculator, x will become 1332 divided by 9. Answer is 148. All right, answer is 148. And that is your answer for x. Huh, sure, like that also can. Uh. Can. All right, this one is Charmaine Sevan. Uh. Now, let's pick another student. All right, so just to convince you that I will get 148 as the answer. Can we have somebody else say another number, please? All right, let's not, let not it be 6. Let, let it be something else. For, hey, 46, very big, uh, Dorian. Can we get a smaller number? Uh? Can somebody give me a smaller number, please? 3. Thank you, Jarek. Okay, 3. Let's take it as three, ah. Uh. Okay, so the same question, ah. Uh, I purposely, uh, you know, have another slide, the same one, ah. Uh. Okay, so y squared is y squared, x is x. Inversely, is the one over proportional is the fish. I don't like the fish. I exchange the fish for equal to k over x. Down here, I declare where k is the concern. All right. So down here, I'm doing the exact step, ah. Uh. It's just that the same color only. Can you see? So down here, question say x is 37. Substitute. X is equal to 37. And Jarek say what? Jarek say y is equal to 3. He say one, not I say one. So down here, you tell your teacher, let y equal to a 3. Tell your teacher, let y equal to 3. Alright, because you are bringing out something to help you. So down here, what you do? You substitute. 3 squared is equal to what? K over x. X is 37. So here you have what? Over 1. 9 over 1 is equal to k over 37. Single fraction equals single fraction, cross multiply. So 1 times k is k. 9 times 37 is, press your calculator, 333. Three, three. So here your k is 333. Three, three, you put your k back into your equation. So your equation now is y squared is equal to 333 three, three over x. This is your equation. So how now? Now they say, find the value of x when y is halved. So down here you can say when y is halved. Just now, uh, just now Jerry say y is 3. Now when y is halved, means what? y is equal to 3 divided by 2. Half means divide by 2, right? It's equal to 1.5. Right. So now your y must be equal to 1.5. Uh. Put your 1.5 back here. 1.5 squared is equal to 333 3, 3 over x. Okay, this is over 1. 1.5 times 1.5, that will give you a 2.25. 2.25 over 1 is equal to 333 3, 3 over x. Single fraction equals single fraction, cross multiply. So x times this one, x uh, 1 times this one. So 2.25 times x will be 2.25. x is equal to 1 times 333 3, 3 is 3.33. How do you find x? 3, 3, 3 divided by 2.25. Press your calculator. What do you get? Bam, 148. Can you see now? Both answer correct. So your x is 148. All right, so this is our question, right? If you can use this method, I think it is what? It is very helpful to you. All right, because sometimes the sec 2, right? Sometimes they teach another method which is very, very uh, confusing. Then you make a lot of mistakes here and there, one. All right. So I've proven to you both questions. Can you see? Answer are one four eight. Can you see? But your working must be very clear. You must tell your teacher, teacher, I'm letting y be three. And the next part, when half, when y is half, what happened? Y is one point five. So your presentation skill must be very strong. And please use numbers that are smaller. Don't use wow, big big number, very scary number. All right. Use number that is easy to do. Okay. So this is uh, what you're going to learn in your uh. Sec 2 direct inverse proportion. Okay, so question 1 done. Huh? Alright, question 2. This one is the P5, P6 method, right? Yeah. <laughs> but actually, right, you, if, if you want, right, you can actually show the, the Sec 2 method. Alright, just to show you what is the Sec 2 method. So down here, we are talking about what? We are talking about two different uh, things, right? Comparing two different things. One is the men and one is the days. So down here, you have to uh, bring out all your algebra skills with it. You must say, let, right, let M be the, be the number of, be the number of men, all right? Needed to build the, what? The, to paint, all right? Needed to paint one building, all right? Then M is for men, ah. Uh, then let, what? Let D, uh, let D be 
the number of days. So you have to tell your teacher what is M, what is D, and all this. Let D be the number of days needed. All right. So here you are supposed to bring up the M and D. And you know that this question, what is it? Is it a direct proportion? Direct proportion means what? One apple, two dollar, two apple, four dollars, times, times. This one, just now we concluded already. One is a times, one is a divide. Can you see not? So this is what we call an inverse. All right. So down here, right, you can say that M, which is the man, is proportional to the inverse of the days. All right. Sec two, you must be able to come up with all these um all these uh statement already to assist you. All right. So you're comparing men and days, and the relationship between them is is an inverse. Inverse means what? Opposite lah. All right. You cannot just times. You need what? One over. Same as the previous part. Eh? This one. Inverse means what? One over lah. So down here I put as one over, and this one is part of the proportional question. So the fish must be coming out lah. So down here, how do you exchange the fish? Exchange the fish for equal to k, d. Same thing, same thing, all right? You must go and find your K first. So do you have a pair of information? Check this out, all right? Question says what? Question says got 22 men, 60 days. Oh, that is called the first pair of information. So you can say that when, when M, which is the man equal to 22, D is equal to 60. What you do? You sub it in. So M is 22, is equal to K over D is 60. This is over one. Remember, your objective is always to find k first. Single fraction equals single fraction, cross multiply. k times 1 is k, 60 times 22. That will give you a 1320. All right, 1320. Once you get the k, what you do? You put back into your equation. So your m is equal to 1320 over d. This is the sec 2 proper way of doing. All right, on the left is the premi 5, premi 6 way of doing. Can do or not? Actually can. Both will give you the same answer. All right? Both will give you the same answer. It's just that sometimes, right, uh, if the question is like one mark, right? One mark, you can do this. Use this method. But if the question is part of the paper two, which requires working, no choice, you have to do this method. Can you see not? So it depends on where the question comes up. If the question comes up in paper one, ah, one mark only. All right? Working all this, not really important. Okay, like it's too important, but it's not that important. Not as important as paper two. So what must happen? Just use this method, the premier 5, premier 6 method. All right? But if the question comes out in paper 2, wow, they want every single step must write one, then you better do this, this method here, on the one on the right. All right? Because your teacher wants to see the step by step. Can you see? So it actually depends on where the question comes out. You have to be careful. All right? So M is equal to 1320 over D. Now what's the question? How many workers must be hired if the building is to be completed 20 days earlier? You're still looking at what? 40 days. So now, when D is 40, when D is 40, D weapon, all right, you sub it in. M is equal to 1320 divided by 40. M is equal to 1320 divided by 40. Answer will be 33. Oh, you need 33 what? M means what? M is men. You need 33 men. But remember, remember, how many more? All right, how many more? So you must take 33 men minus away the 22 men that you have. To give you your 11 more men. Can you see? Both will still give you the answer. Alright. So one is with the proper sec 2 presentation. If the question asks in paper 2. Alright. The other one. Uh, use your primary 5, primary 6 method. You still can get the answer. One mark. Just stick and go. Don't have to write so much. Okay. Alright. So it really depends. And the last question. Question 3. Come. Follow me. Ah, uh, This one is very simple. This is something called map and skill. My favorite. All right, so RF stands for what? RF stands for representative fraction. Representative fraction. All right. So 1 is to 50,000. 1 over 50,000 can be written as ratio. 1 is to 50,000. All right. You can write it like that also. No problem. So a 10 centimeter square part is represented on the map. So this is on the map. Huh? This is on the map. All right. On the map, the length of the cycling track is 100 centimeter. So what happened? Down here under map and scale, there are two kinds of scale. One is called the length scale and one is called the area scale. If you are talking about the length of the cycling track, you should be looking at the length scale. Length and length. Duh. If you are given something called a cm square, square means what? Area. There's something to do with the 
E real scale. So down here, what do you have? All right, let's use the uh, representative fraction of one is to 50,000. You can start off with one is to 50,000. So as a ratio, right, you must know that both sides, right, the units is the same. So you can write as one cm dot dot represent 50,000 centimeter. So cm and cm, they are the same. It's fair comparison. All right, it's fair comparison. Hey, but down here, centimeter, oh, yo, they want it in what? Kilometer, you know. So how? What is the conversion from kilometer to centimeter? Kilometer to meter, right, is times 1,000. Meter to centimeter is times 100. So, kilometer to centimeter is actually times 100,000. Five zero. CM back to kilometer is divided by 100,000. Five zero. So, I purposely changed the 50,000 centimeter to kilometer first. All right? To make the number easier to handle. So, 50,000 divided by 100,000 from centimeter change to kilometer. So, I move back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's a 0 0.5 kilometer. Alright, I'm changing conversion from centimeter to kilometer. So 50,000 centimeter is the same as 0 0.5 kilometer. Down here is still 1 cm. Just to let you know, the one on the left right is always what we call the, the, the map. The map means the fake. Uh. Right? And the one on the right is called the actual. The actual means the actual distance or the actual area, the actual space. So we know that 1 cm on the map represents the actual distance uh, on the road. Uh, let's say it's 0 0.5 km. So 1 cm on the fake, which is on the map, is actually representing 0 0.5 km on the real drawing of the real park. All right. So down here, they are saying, what is the length of the cycling track is 100 cm. All right. So on the map, which is here, all right, on the left is on the map, is 100 cm. What is the what? What is the one actual? What is the actual cycling track? All right, around the park. So the actual, what must you do? From one, how do you get to 100? You must times 100, right? What must you do on the other side? Do the same. 0 0.5 kilometer, you also must times 100, to be fair. And that will give you a 50 kilometer. And that's your answer. So 100 cm on your map actually represents 50 kilometer on the actual ground. So you must understand that. So that's the way to do it. Lor. Very easy. Okay. And question 3B will be our last question. Okay. So here, we are still talking about the representative fraction of 1 is to 50,000. So this 1 is to 50,000, right, is what I call like the O, o scale. How come? Because I just now read the question already. If the park is now represented using a scale of 1 is to 20,000, so now there's a new scale. All right, this new skill say what? New skill is 1 is to 20,000. The old skill is 1 is to 50,000. All right, so this scale, right, this thing can change. No problem. But remember, the actual never change. Actual, all right, actual never change. Okay, the actual space never change. Singapore is this size, means Singapore is this size. It will never change. All right, maybe you can do some reclaiming of the land and land and all this. All right, but in terms of size, it will not become so, uh, well, like super huge like that. Cannot be. All right, so the actual never change. We always must have this thinking. So in the old scale, right? In the old scale, what happened? Remember, we have this 1 cm represents 50,000 centimeter. We always start off with a cm and cm. Then after that, I try to make it to what? Kilometer. All right, this will be 0 0.5 kilometer. This is the same as the previous page. All right, can you see the previous page? 1 cm is to 0 0.5 kilometer. 1 cm is to 0 0.5 kilometer. Eh, this is what I call the length, what? length scale. Length scale. But, but the, the question is talking about what now? Let me take a look. Huh? Question is talking about the area of the park. Can you use your area to, uh, can you use your length to measure your area? You cannot use your area, you cannot use your length to measure area. Uh, 200 cm, 2000 cm square is wrong, Doreen. All right. You cannot use your length to measure area. Not fair, not fair. How can? So how? You must do something to your length scale first. Remember the cm square? How do you change the length scale to an area scale? Now I want it as an area scale. Remember the difference between a length and an area is the square? So now you must purposely, you must purposely take the length scale and you 
purposely, you square it. You square it. Alright, that will give you the area scale. Because area got this square behind one. So 1 times 1 is a 1. Cm times Cm is a Cm square. You see? The square come out already, right? Happy? 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 will give you a 0 0.25. Kilometer times kilometer, kilometer square. This is what you call the area scale. And now what happened? The part right is 10 cm square. All right, on this O scale. So we have 1 cm square uh, represents 0 0.25 kilometer square on the O scale. The part is 10 centimeter square. So how? 1, how to get to 10? Times 10, right? So down here, you must automatically times 10 also. All right, whatever you do on one side, do on the other side. So it's actually 2.5 kilometer square. And this 2.5 kilometer square is the actual right? the actual area. This is the actual area of the park. All right, actual area of the park. The real thing. All right, the real park. Uh, the real park. Ouch, I hit myself. Pain. Oh, the real park, right? It's 2.5 kilometer square. It's huge, man. Okay, so now you need to use this real park, right? This 2.5 kilometer square to put back into your new skill. All right, your new skill is here. Okay, but for your new skill, right? You cannot use the length skill to compare again, huh? So how? You need to adjust everything to your area scale. So again, here 1 cm represents 20,000 centimeter. All right, change the cm to kilometer first. So 1 cm here represents divided by 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0 0.2 kilometer. This is the length scale I don't want. I cannot use my length scale to compare my area scale. So I need to change my length scale to area scale. I need to square both sides. 0 0.2 kilometer square that. Right, to change it to area scale. 1 times 1 is a 1. Cm times Cm is a Cm square. 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 is a 0 0.04. Kilometer times kilometer is a kilometer square. Okay, so this is part of the new scale. And remember the actual area of the park never changed, right? The actual area is 2.5. Ah, uh, 2.5. Ah, uh. so this actual area must put down here 2.5 kilometer square. All right, the actual area never changed. So now my question to myself, now my question to myself is from 0 0.04, how do I get to 2.5 times what? So I press my calculator. 2.5 divided by 0 0.04 is actually a 62.5. Let me check, let me check. 62.5 times 0 0.04, correct, is 2.5. So if I times 62.5 on the right down here, I also need to times 62.5. Whatever I do on one side, I need to do on the other side. All right, and therefore my answer on this new map is 62.5 cm square. That's the answer. If the park, the same park, which is the actual area, 2.5 km square, is now represented using another new skill of 1 is to 20,000, you're supposed to find the area of the park on the new map. All right, on the new map means on the fake. All right, which is on the new map, you draw, 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 is 62.5 cm squared only, which is a very small space. So that small 62.5 cm squared actually represents the 2.5 kilometer squared, the rear park. All right, so this is the way to do this out question. Okay? All right, so today, right, this lesson, we talk a little bit about the revision, right, about the set one, set two work. Huh? All this you can find in your lesson three, computer aided assessment. All right, then you'll be asking, hey, sure, uh, like that only, uh, then, if you want a little bit more, right, can I suggest you to, as I say, uh, send me questions. Send me your type of question, things that you don't know. Lah. I want to help you to answer your questions that you don't know, right? So if you have questions that you don't know, can you just uh, send it to me and, uh, as an email? Or you can actually WhatsApp me at this number here, 89330213. All right, so those questions which I think is uh, very interesting or which I think that you need to know, I'll put it in our next live lesson. Can if not then the lesson will be about one hour plus only. Can if we can then we if we have that small lesson then we stretch the lesson a little bit longer to one hour thirty minutes. You say okay, all right. So for the set one, I have we have done the lesson three, computer aided assessment, and set two the lesson three also computer aided assessment. Can for set two if you want to try the set one question right, actually this portion I have duplicate the question without the answer, so you can actually print out this part of the PowerPoint. So question one. All right, question two and question three is down here. No answer one. All right, but you still can uh, go and review the recorded, the live recording and all this to look for the, 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 the notes, uh, the step-by-step 
solution. Okay. So question one, two, and three for the sec two to practice. And this portion is the what? For the sec one to practice if, if they want. What if we want to try sec two? Eh, this is for you. All right, Doreen. All right, so this is for the sec two uh, portion, right? Which again is empty. Like there's, no, there's no solution down here. So you can print out this part. And my advice for you, right, to print out, can you please listen? All right, my advice to you. You click on the PowerPoint, all right? And you, you click on the print button, the print. Please, please, all right, what must you do? Down here, can you please select two slides? Two slides means what? One piece of paper, all right? One piece of paper got two what? Got two PowerPoint slides. Can you see not? Don't, don't, don't print one on one. It's very expensive, all right? On one piece of paper, you have two slides. Okay, can read one, can do the working one. Don't print one, one slide on one paper. It's very, very um, uh, waste paper, I feel. Can? And, and also select what? Select print on both sides so that your paper right, can print the front and the back. Save more paper. All right, so on one piece of paper, front and back, you can have four slides already. Can you see or not? All right, and also, please, 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 the last step, very important, print what? Print pure black and white. All right, so that you'll be able to get this type of printing. Don't print with the color. It wastes a lot of ink one. Don't do that. Print pure black and white. Trust me on it. All right, and it's very clear. Look at here. All right, look at here. Is it clear or not? All right, look at here. Is it very clear? You'll get something like this. And it's easy for you to like, okay, do working. Okay, the time Mr. Ong say what? Like, okay, do this, do this. So you'll be able to do your working. Can or not? Can? So this, right, this will be uploaded into our website. So for you, you can click under the notes portion. All right, you, usually there's these three tabs, right? Class prerequisite, there's these notes, and there's this uh, watch again. All right, so under the notes, this will appear there. So you can print out whatever you want. All right, whatever part of the uh, question you want. All right, so I totally understand sec one, you don't have access to the sec two. Sec two, you don't have access to the sec one, but this is for you. All right, so sec one, just take it as an extra information we will be learning in sec two. Sec two, just take it as a revision, all right, of what you have learned in sec one. Cool? All right, and that's it. That's it for this lesson. All right, I don't have anything for you unless you have something for me. All right, then this lesson is over. So uh, I will see you all on the next week, same time, Ken. So again, if you have question, please do write it in to me, Ken. And I show you my number again and the email address is down here. Oh, down here is the number, right? Email address you can find inside the worksheet, right? So the worksheet down there got right also. I can, very easy to find my email and my number also. Ken? All right, and that's it for this lesson. I uh, hope you learned something. And in the meantime, continue to take care. Uh, be safe, huh? All right, bye-bye, be good. And don't be naughty.